Hi, my name is Steve Elsie. I'm the president of Your Sanctuary Productions. We are here in the studio with Mary Alice Cerrito Fettis. Mary Alice, welcome to the program. Thank you, Steve, for having me. Well, one of the things I didn't mention while I was uh, uh, introducing you is you are the chair of Whale Fest Monterey. That's correct. Going into our ninth year. Okay, if you could do an elevator pitch, uh, you know, of whale for Whale Fest Monterey, what would that be like? We started out uh, nine years ago, uh, we, Fisherman's Wharf Association, looking for an event and decided to resurrect a previous event called Whale Fest Monterey. Mm -hmm. And um, that has now evolved from an event that was uh, just a couple of thousand people, maybe three, four thousand people over a single weekend in January, to now about 20,000 people. The last weekend in January, the weekend between the playoffs and Super Bowl, mm. <laughs> so that we have very little uh, competition. And we bill the Whale Fest as a educational event dressed up to look like fun. And we use the word whale because it's the biggest thing, and especially the blue whale, the mm -hmm. biggest thing that's ever existed on the earth, as an umbrella to cover anything and everything in the ocean. And so what we're doing is celebrating the migration of the gray whale and um, discussing the biodiversity of the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary and its challenges. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a wonderful event, and you know how I feel about it, Mary Alice. Absolutely. I just, it is so great, and you have done an amazing job. Oh, thank you. Because I, I, I have seen the iterations of, of Chowder Fest and Whale Fest, and you have managed to take the event this time and really turn it into not a, a celebration of the gray whales, and so much more. You've got a symposium. You've got academics traveling from across the country to come to Whale Fest. So That's a big true. congratulations to you, you for that. Tell us a little bit about the, the, the date for the upcoming Whale Fest. Well, one of the things that makes us so unique is our, our huge... Um, as I was saying earlier, biodiversity. And so the depth of the bay creates an incredible um, uh, difference in w what we find there. Um, and so we have 18, as a result, we have 18 or more research institutes mm -hmm. on the Monterey Bay uh -huh. with scientists that we can um, draw on mm -hmm. for their expertise. So mm -hmm. if you want to talk about the world expert on uh, elephant seals or Humboldt squid mm -hmm. or um, plankton that is fluorescent, they're here. They're mm -hmm. right here. Um, we don't have to go outside our bay. We can celebrate our own uh, celebrities uh, that we have here. Mm -hmm. And so that's who comes to the um, the symposium, right. who we ask for here. Mm -hmm. Our exhibitors, we ask for any institution, agency, business that affects the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary mm -hmm. uh, School to come mm -hmm. and uh, provide with us a concept that they want to get across to the general public. And they must have a dynamic and interactive booth. Okay. And so the whale entanglement team mm -hmm. brings their um, tools mm -hmm. that they use to disentangle a whale. Mm -hmm. Hopkins brings a giant squid to dissect. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Save the Whales, um, Mara Seidenstecker brings D, her 43 foot long humpback whale that blows up, you walk inside of it, and you can see where the organs are in the whale. Some of the organs are exactly where you would think they are, and others you go, wow, mm -hmm. why are they there? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, and now this year uh, we're going to have, in 2019, a Greenfield Science Workshop is going to bring um, many feet of a uh, humpback whale bones, the actual bones mm -hmm. they're going to be bringing. And so um, since they're going to have a 40-foot long booth, my guess is it's going to be about 35 feet of bones, wow. something like that. Wow. And so 
So the exhibitors who come here can't come with a little brochure. Oh, they can. Well, they could, yes. They could, but, I mean, if they did, they would be washed out mm -hmm. by all these other interesting things that are happening. The Coast Guard brings their fast response boat. Mm -hmm. um, the fire department brings their fire boat. That's and right. So it's, it's, there's a lot going on as far as just the exhibitors mm -hmm. and the symposium. And uh, in the past, we've also had some activities that explain our culture and our history. So we have, uh, prior to World War II, the, uh, most of the businesses on Fisherman's Wharf were owned by Japanese. Mm -hmm. And so we have a Japanese culture here in a couple of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so one that we celebrate it is through gyutaku, which is the uh, art form of stenciling fish. Oh. And so we give people a squid or a sardine that they're able to paint, stencil, and then they hang up these pieces of paper. Mm. And in the ancient times, say mm -hmm. a fisherman maybe couldn't read or write, mm -hmm. but he knew how many fish he had caught so he's and he couldn't maybe he couldn't write rock cod and he couldn't write squid mm -hmm. but he could stencil the fish and put up the number of fish that he had caught so uh, so that was so you knew how many fish that he had and either he sold them to the fishmonger or he sold them to the general public so that was so that's that portion however if you recall there's a book called rainbow fish mm. and so now mm -hmm. <laughs> all, of our, all of our squid and all of our sardines get painted rainbow colors. Anyway, it's, <laughs> anyway, it's very much fun. Um, and another thing is I, I have on a scrimshaw. This is an actual piece oh, of scrimshaw. scrimshaw. Yes. Uh, you know what? Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. So uh, we give, uh, soap has been donated by Comfort Inns, the little bars. Mm -hmm. And so we give people... A toothpick and these little bars of soap and they're able to put in a design into the soap they take black shoe polish okay. wipe it on mm -hmm. and then they wipe it off and mm -hmm. then they have their own you know scrimshaw. air sots right. a, a scrimshaw to take with them That's neat. and then um, going back to the Japanese history uh, abalone was caught by the Japanese fishermen yes. off of Point Lobos mm -hmm. and they um, would then dry the abalone in strips and then send it back to Japan. And oh. so that was the only way that the Japanese, uh, that the abalone was eaten. Mm -hmm. And then in 1919 or a little bit sooner, maybe, maybe 1917, Pop Ernst came along mm -hmm. and uh, used the abalone in a, uh, yes, he pounded it. And he prepared it in a Wiener Schnitzel sort of way. Mm -hmm. The Italians came along later, and they pr prepared it more in the in the breaded Italian style. Oh, okay. So then the abalone became very popular, mm -hmm. and so today Monterey Bay Monterey Abalone Company, uh, off of Wharf Two, yes. raises abalone, mm -hmm. and they bring abalone <gasps> to the wharf, mm -hmm. and we provide them with a baby swimming pool, mm -hmm. and they race their <laughs> abalones. And what happens is with the abalone is that we create a shadow, and all the little abalone run underneath this shadow, uh -huh. and they they think they're safe, and then. It's 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 just like a pot, a lid, the lid of a pot. Mm -hmm. All right, so they all think they're they're cool. So they remove the the lid, and the abalones freak out, and they run to the sides of the baby swimming pool oh, where the shadows are. Okay. And this way, they think that they're Safe. out. Yes, no, no predators are get it. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, and then we provide the winners, and it's like they have little flags on them. To, to, so, so you can you can decide which abalone you like and you think is going to win. Anyway, it's lots well, of Mary fun. Well, Mary Alice, I, I just I'm wondering is that the only uh, instance of abalone racing in the world? I would not be surprised. I would assume so. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. I really hadn't thought about it. That's just so that, yeah. that's so neat, and it, it, it exemplifies 
what 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 goes on over there? Absolutely. There are so many things, Absolutely. and there are so many unique things. What about the whale watching that people can do if that they come to Whale Fest? Definitely. Talk to us about that. So we have four businesses that mm -hmm. provide whale watching. Absolutely exciting. There's enough whales to go around for all of these businesses, mm -hmm. and uh, they usually go out to two to three times a day. Okay. De depending on on what is happening and how uh, actually I think some of the some of the boats are available to be chartered if people wanted to go out really early. Yes. I, I, I'm like eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's not. To, you know, it's not fishing hours, six o'clock or something like mm -hmm. that. But anyway, they they would even go out, say three special times, charters. special charters through throughout the day, and so um, and that's very exciting because, as I said earlier, we are celebrating the uh, migration of the gray whales. Yes. So this is what's happening mm -hmm. as as they're transiting. Um, so so year round, of course, we have whales. Yes. So. And in January, it's the gray whales that mm -hmm. they're going down to Mexico to have their babies. Right. And to and um, and then of course, then when they come back, mm -hmm. uh, which is in the later spring and summer, then that's when the orcas show up so they can dine on the babies. Ah, uh, <laughs> now that's the circle of life <laughs> that exactly. we all learned about in the Lion King, huh? It, 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 absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, one thing that I left out was we also have Tim Thomas who provides wharf walks and provides for history of the wharf, which includes whaling and all of these other wonderful um, uh, wharf hi histories that, that exist. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to just say as far as like the uh, one more dynamic with the with the symposium. So last year we had um, uh, two gentlemen, one from Na MPS, Navy Postgraduate School, and the other one from Abari, um, which is Monterey Bay Research Institute. Um, and so it was John Joseph from MPS and John Ryan from uh, Mabari, and they put microphones out in the bay right. so that you can hear what's going on in the bay. Mm -hmm. And so there's dolphins, there's ships, there's all sorts of of, of interesting, thank you, soundscapes. Mm -hmm. And so we had to bring in special woofers, you know, speakers, yes, in order to properly have our chairs rattled <laughs> by mm -hmm. the very low, 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 low sounds, mm -hmm. rumblings of the gray, of the blue whale, because they are so big, so low, so rumbly, and so we had to make sure that people mm, properly could feel that. Uh, exactly, mm. exactly. I mean, you go to a movie theater and you have all these special effects, and they, mm -hmm. they have these big woofers in the, right. in the, in the movie mm -hmm. theaters, so you can, and all it. the sci-fi movies or Marvel movies, you can be properly, you know, scared. Right. And so, <laughs> so, so this to me that this was one of our um, uh, special specialties last year uh, and this year Brian Balcom is a uh, marine biologist and he uh, works for a company which I can't remember at the moment mm -hmm. um, has just done the report on the boom that's going to go out and collect the Plastic and the it's uh, oh the good the big plastic garbage patch in the Pacific it, oh all over the, oh, for all the gyres okay oh really so this the kid who's twenty four nice. years old from Den uh, Amsterdam okay um, Denmark um, he is developing all of these booms mm -hmm. and um, he wants to develop about six hundred of them and his goal. <laughs> is to clean up all the gyres mm -hmm. by 2025. Well, good for him. We just need to, s that that's for the existing mm -hmm. amount of plastic that's mm -hmm. out there. So one of the, uh, some of the other exhibitors and people who will be talking at the uh, Whale Fest will discuss everything that's going on with the plastic, should I call it revolution? Mm -hmm. um, uh, we'll be explaining how people can change their culture mm -hmm. in order to be able to reduce the amount of plastic so that this kid can have his goal mm -hmm. of cleaning up all of this plastic. But it's getting pretty scary. The, the plastic is being seen in the cellular level of the fish. Yeah. And so Micro. we have to be 
we just have to be very, very cognizant of this. And of course, we're using the straw and plastic bags as tips of the iceberg to be able to say, please, you know, refuse plastic straws. Please take your own bags wherever you go, mm -hmm. so you're not using plastic bags. Right. And and in addition, uh, please have your own water bottle so mm -hmm. that you're not using plastic water bottles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so that's probably one of the big messages of of the Whale Fest. It's not that we focus on plastic and its uses, but how can we help it not mm -hmm. bring it up? Mm -hmm. And so, as I said earlier, the Whale Fest is about the, um, the biodiversity of the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary and its challenges. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is, is one of its challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very exciting mm -hmm. program. One of the other things that we do is we try to reach out to um, underserved kids of Monterey County. Mm -hmm. So we have reached out to CASA. You'll have to help mm -hmm. me on this one. CASA is the Court Appointed Sponsors well, um I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Court, uh, anyway, court no. Advocate something. Uh, yes. There you go. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. And um, and so last year we provided parking mm -hmm. for the sponsors, and we provided chowder bowls for sponsor and child, mm -hmm. and T-shirts for the child, and a whale fest T-shirts. Mm -hmm. And so, what I found out, which was heart wrenching for me, is so many of these children had never seen the ocean before. And then, as I was saying earlier, Greenfield Community Science Workshop. Mm -hmm. They, um, we bring them, we provide buses for them to come. We provide them as well with chowder bowls and t-shirts. And once again, we're able to hopefully break through the lettuce curtain and reach out to more of our county and just, and just, and bring m more children here because everyone, whether you're 80 years old or five years old, everybody has a responsibility to the ocean and kids really get it. And I don't know if you remember this, but it was the fourth grade class from Mount Madonna School that got a California law passed to ban microbeads yep. in uh, cosmetics. Yep. So I have full mm -hmm. faith <laughs> and cheer on grammar school kids, high school kids, and of course college kids mm -hmm. as as well. Oh, it was a third grade class that got plastic bags banned on the peninsula the first time. Absolutely. <laughs> so That's just, I love those kinds oh, of things. Oh, absolutely. Ma Mary Alice, uh, January 27th? 26, Tell us the dates. 26 and 27. Okay, and what's the best website people can go to get information about the, the uh, Wharf Right now it would be MontereyWharf.com. MontereyWharf.com. And, and go to the events page. And, okay. And, and the... Whale Fest is there. Okay. We are working on a Whale Fest. And where does it? And tell us about physically, because we've got about three seconds left. Mm. Physically, where does it take place? Uh, <clears throat> between the Conference Center and Fisherman's Wharf. Okay, so and so Custom House Plaza area. Right to the Conference Center to the end of Fisherman's Wharf. Okay, and people can park in the the Fisherman's Wharf parking lot. Correct. It's called the Waterfront Parking Lot. Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend that they park in the garages. Uh, okay. The east and west garage, um, just for ease. Okay. And right. so that and you heard it right here. Whale Fest is coming up. Whale Fest Monterey, end of January. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Steve Elzey, president of Your Sanctuary Productions. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh.